In lesson four, we're going to get a brief introduction to relationships in our database. We'll learn why we want to use relationships, the different types of relationships, the difference between primary and foreign keys. We'll set up an appointment table, learn about default values, and the date and now functions. Next up, we're going to talk about relationships in your database. Now, relationships are something that I normally didn't cover in my older series until the expert lessons. I wait till expert level one. After nine beginner lessons, I give you all kinds of foundational material about building forms and tables and queries and reports and all that good stuff. And then I wait till expert level one to go over relationships so I can cover them properly because there's a lot to relationships. There really is. But everyone always asks me about relationships when they're in the middle of the beginner series. Well, how do I, how do I take, you know, uh, a customer and, and list all of their appointments? Or how do I take a customer and list all of their cars that they have or the orders that, that I want to put in the system for them? And you need multiple tables for that stuff. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. So since everybody always asks me about relationships, I figured I would put a preview and give you a simple example of relationships now in beginner two. But I want you to keep in mind that we're going to do complete coverage from our news team seven, right? Complete coverage will start in access expert one. So today we're just going to go over a little bit about relationships just so I can, I can wet your palate a little bit. All right, so what are relationships? Well, Access is called a relational database, and a relational database simply means that the data is organized and can be accessed according to one or more relationships between the tables. Okay, like I mentioned a minute ago, customers to orders. Okay, you don't put all that information in one table. You have a customer table and an order table. Different types of stuff go in their own tables. All right, cars, customers, orders, contacts. All right, classes and students, those are all separate types of stuff. For example, if you're dealing with customers and orders, you can't put the order information in the customer table because you don't know how many orders a customer might place. They might place one, they might place hopefully a hundred, right? So you can't put all those fields in the customer table. I see that time and time again when people send me their databases. They've got like 10 different address fields. Right? No, no, you, you, no, you, you make separate tables for that stuff. And you're going to learn how in just a minute. And the reason why we use relational databases to help minimize errors, increase efficiency and eliminate duplicate data. Okay. For example, let's say you're doing customers to vehicles. Okay. Now, if you're using a flat file database, an old school database or an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. I see lots of people are upgrading to access because they've been using Excel for years and years and they want something more efficient, okay? Now, you, let's say you sell cars. You've got one customer, and he buys a car. you got Joe Smith, and his address, his phone number, and there's his car. And yes, forgive this. I actually borrowed, I, I, I took these images from my original Access 2003 lesson that I did way, way back, years and years and years ago. So I, it's kind of an homage to my first lesson, so that's why they, they're, they're cheesy clip art. Did I do better? Yeah, but these are kind of neat, so I kept them. <laughs> Okay, so Joe Smith now comes back a couple years later and buys a second car. Okay, so now, as you can see, you've got Joe Smith, his phone number again, his address again, and his car information for the new car. Okay. Well, then he buys another one a few years later. And you can see how now we have duplicate information. We got Joe Smith in there three times. Okay. And it's just not a very efficient system. Now Joe's buddy comes in, Bill Jones, because he, he gave him your card and he gets a, you know, like a little uh, a commission or something from you for, for, for referring his buddy, referral fee, let's call it. And now you got Bill Jones in there, Bill buys two cars. Okay, so you can see all the duplicate data that's filling up our tables now. Now, the proper way to store this information is you have one record in your customer table for Joe Smith with his information, right? The stuff pertaining to the customer. Then you have a separate table for your vehicles with the year, make, and model of the vehicle and all the other vehicle information, right? The VIN and mileage and all that stuff. Okay, you don't put that in the customer table. And what we will use to relate this stuff together are those IEDs. We learned about auto numbers, right? In beginner one, we learned about what an auto number is. So Joe is customer number 101. Let's say that's his auto number. That's his customer ID, okay? So we store the customer ID in the customer table and we take that and we put that in the car table, the vehicle table. So now, because this has 101 in it, I can relate that back to Joe Smith's record. 
right? And that's how I can tell who owns each car. Okay, so now I got three customers, right? Joe Smith, Bill Jones, Sam Price, and I can see each of their IDs here, and I can easily tell who owns what car. Put a 102 in there and a 103 in there for Sam Price or Small Price, whatever that was. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and apparently Joe and Sam are twins, I guess. I don't know. All right, so you see how you put the customer ID in the other table. Okay, now that customer ID is the key field. And there are two types of key fields, and you don't have to remember these names, folks. You don't got to. Again, I'm going to go over this again when we get to expert level one. There's a primary key and there's a foreign key. Okay. Now, the primary key is the key in that table that uniquely identifies that record. Okay. And you'll only have one of them. Okay. It's indexed, no duplicates. That's the primary key field. So for customers, it's your customer ID. Now, the vehicle table will also have a primary key, right? An auto number itself. And that uniquely identifies each vehicle. So that's the primary key for this table, All right? Customer ID is the primary key for the customer table. The vehicle ID is the primary key for the vehicle table. The foreign key is this guy, okay? It's a key field, but it's a key field from this table. We just use it to determine what customer owns what car. So in this table, customer ID is the foreign key. All right, see how that works? All right, and again, just don't worry about all these the terminology and stuff. Just try to grasp the concepts. Now, if that wasn't confusing enough, there are three different types of relationships. There are actually more, but these are the three most popular ones. There's one-to-one, -one, one to many, and many to many. All right, the most popular relationship is one to many. That's the one you're going to see all the time. All right, one to many is what we looked at a minute ago. One customer to many vehicles. That's the most standard relationship that you're going to see in most databases. One to one relationships aren't used that often. Many to many come into play. Let's say you're doing company drivers to vehicles and you can assign a driver to multiple vehicles and a vehicle to multiple drivers. That's a many to many relationship. Don't worry about these two types. So these are much more advanced, and I cover those in later expert classes. So let's go back to our database. This is the database in the last lesson. And let's create a table that we can use for an example with relationships. Let's make a table to track appointments for each customer. All right, like in a little appointment book. Each customer can have multiple appointments. Okay, so it'll be a one-to-many relationship. So let's create a new table. Create table design. That opens up this guy. All right, what's our primary key going to be? It's going to be appointment ID. That'll be our auto number. Okay, that's our primary key field. Each appointment has its own ID that we can use to uniquely identify that appointment, that specific instance of an appointment. Now, how do I know what customer this appointment is with? Well, that's going to be the customer ID. Now, here's the trick, and this is very important. Yes, customer ID is an auto number. But it's an auto number in this table, okay? It's an auto number here in this table. So we don't want to make it an auto number here because auto number says start at one and just give me next consecutive number for every consecutive record. We don't want that. We want to store the customer ID for the customer who belongs to this appointment here. So we have to make this a number, a regular number, specifically a number of type long integer, but long integer is the default, so don't worry about that. All right, it's going to be a number of type long integer, and this is the foreign key. Okay, that's how we know what customer this is. Now, what other information about this appointment might we want to store in here? Well, how about the date time of the appointment? Now, don't just use the word date or the word time. Those are reserved words in access. The word date has a special meaning. Okay, date time is fine. That's not a reserved word. And we want to put both the date and the time together in a date time field. Okay. By the way, if you want to learn more about the reserved words, there's a reserved word list on my website. I'll put a link in the link section down below for reserved words. All right, what's next? Whenever I'm making any table, I like to go through the who, what, where, why, when, how, right? We got the who, we got the what, it's an appointment. You could put in here a description, right? That'll be a short text field. And then I like to put description and notes. And that's a long text field. And pretty much every table that I build, it'll get a description and notes. Because right, when you want to see it in the list, the description can be like, you know, consultation for a new project. And then the notes, you can put all the stuff that you talked about if you want to. 
if you want to store a location, you can put that in there, like an address or something, you know, the, the where, uh, all kinds of, whatever you want to put in here to track this appointment, okay? If it's closed, right, is closed, you can make that a yes, no field, or I like to go is open, okay? There's all kinds of stuff you can do, all right? Whatever you feel you want to track for this appointment. While we're in here, let's put a couple of default values in here. Default values are values that the field will start with when you create a new record. For example, the date and time here. I don't want to have to type in the date and time every time. So let's put in the current date and time in the appointment table. So I'm going to come down here where it says default value. Now I'm going to put equals now and then open close parentheses. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. All right, shift F2 to zoom in. Equals now. Now is a function that will return the current date and time. So it'll put the date and time in there. Now, yeah, appointments are usually in the future, so you can modify it, you can change it, but that's what it's gonna start at. If you want just the date, you can put in here equals date, like that. That'll give you today's date at midnight, okay? But I'm gonna put now in there, just so it starts off with the current date and time, okay? And maybe is open, I'll change that default value to yes instead of no. So I'll come right in here and put in the word yes. So that'll start checked. And then when the appointment's done, when it's closed, I uncheck the box and I know which appointments are closed. Okay. Okay. So let's save this table. Let's control S to save. This will be my appointment T appointment table. Save it. Now it says there's no primary key to find. We talked about this in beginner one. I always forget to do this manually. So I'm going to let access to it. I'll say yes. Access will find that auto number right there and make that the primary key. Okay. This is the foreign key. Remember, this is the primary key. Okay, so let's save this guy, close it down. Now, I want to put some sample appointments in, right? Just like we did in beginner one. I'm going to open up the customer table just so I can see my customers. I'm going to slide this over like this. Okay, now I'm going to open up the appointment table next to it. Now, I like to do this with some sample data just when I'm building my database and to teach you guys how this stuff works. Okay. And this just means these little pound symbols here, this just means that, that that field isn't wide enough. So let's make that wider. There we go. Okay, so there's my appointment ID. You can see new, that's my auto number. You got the customer ID, which starts off as zero because it doesn't know who the customer is. Date, time, description, notes, and it is open. All right, so let's put our first record in here. Now we'll tab over or click on the customer ID. Now, who is our first appointment with? Let's say it's with me, Richard Rost. I am customer ID one. So in this field here, I'll put a one, okay? The date time of the appointment, let's say it's for 1.16 at 6 p.m., okay? And we'll call this a consultation. Okay, there's my first appointment. Let's put in a couple more. Next appointment, let's say we got an appointment with James Kirk. Now, what's James Kirk? James Kirk is customer 12, so I'll put a 12 over here for the customer ID. All right, this, one, this appointment's going to be on 118 at 3 p.m. And it's to refit the enterprise. And notes if you want to put notes here. Okay. A little bit bigger. Okay. All right. We're, we're trucking along here. Let's put a third appointment in the system. Notice I don't have any of the other customer details in here. You don't need them. Because if I need to know this person's first and last name, I can look over here to record 12. I got James Kirk. I can scroll to the right and get his phone number, his address, all that stuff. All right, we don't store all this extra customer data in the appointment table, okay? Now, at, at this point, everyone always asks me, do I always have to look up these customer IDs from this table? No, I'm gonna show you how to do something called a combo box in a minute when we build a form for our appointments, okay? All right, come over here. Let's put in a third appointment. This one is for Will Riker, so he's customer 15. So I'll put that 15 right here, okay? And his appointment's on the 20th at 4 p.m. And this is to uh, deborg the uh, Deep Space Nine. He's gonna help with that project, okay? All right, now let's say that my consultation was finished on the 16th, so I'm gonna mark that closed, but I wanna put another appointment for me in here. So next appointment, customer one again. Okay, now it's for 1.22 at 11 a.m. And it's to uh, discuss service okay see that now we've got two appointments in the system for me i'm customer id one okay and you can uniquely tell who each of these people are based on the customer id 
I don't have to put any information about appointments in the customer table. I can have an unlimited number of appointments for each customer, right? And that's why we use two separate tables. I don't have duplicated customer information over here in the appointment table. Okay, so now we have our appointment table set up. Now we can make a nice form where we can put this information in just like we did with our customer form, okay? And we'll make a combo box to select the customer from a list instead of having to remember that customer ID number. We'll do that in the next lesson. Want more? If you'd like to see me post the next lesson in the series for free here on my YouTube channel, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment saying, I'd like the next lesson, please. Click on the link in the description below for more details on how this works.